Hi all. We're just going to do a quick lab uh, about NAT exemption. Um, so I showed you previously that using static NAT you couldn't add an IP to itself on another segment. I'll just show you that quick uh, one more time. Uh, static more secure less secure your less secure IP your more secure IP right? Um, so we were saying before that uh, you know, uh, more secure, less secure interface, less secure IP, more secure IP. And here maybe, you know, in this case going inside a DMZ, we'd put a DMZ IP and then the private IP. Um, so the private IP, or the inside IP would be added to a DMZ IP um, as its source when it goes to the DMZ. And then people on the DMZ would point to this DMZ IP and it would be added to the inside host and you connect to the inside host. Um, I'll just show you a quick then, uh, if we do a telnet from PC1 on the inside to... Uh, DMZ server one, open connection, show xlate. So our local host, PC1, has been added to himself on the DMZ segment. We'll just uh, break that and we'll just get rid of this static. So conversely, you can use NAT exemption to do the same thing, um, to NAT IP, an IP to itself on another segment. Um, and uh, it'll also be bidirectional, so the, the uh, less secure segment can still come inbound to the more secure uh, IP. Um, but we're not actually going to take a translation slot inside the ASA. And um, you do NAT exemption with an access list. So I'll just build the access list first and then we'll stop and talk about it for a sec. Access list, we'll call it no NAT permit. Okay, so uh, what we've done is, uh, you know, created an access list. Um, IP as a protocol, you don't here specify your transport layer protocol like um, TCP, UDP. You just put IP um, and you put your more secure host and then your less secure host, right? So we're talking about uh, this is going to be applied to the inside for our PC1. And we want him to look like himself when he goes to the DMZ and talks to uh, DMZ server one. So you apply this with the NAT command. So NAT inside, <clears throat> just like we did uh, previously, NAT inside, and we'd have a 1 or a 2, which would match the global 1 or 2. There's no global statement with the NAT exemption. You just use the NAT statement. But the key thing here is the identifier 0. 0 means it's a NAT exemption. Um, so there is no global to go with it. And 0, uh, again, is, is what tells the ASA that we're exempt from NAT. And then you reference your access list, and we call it no NAT. So those are all the commands you need there. Now if we go to PC1 and we tell net to DMZ server 1, right? We have an open connection. If we do a show xlate, we don't have one, right? Whereas when you do a static, it takes up a translation slot. So uh, well, I can show you do a show con. So you can see there is a connection, right? Our inside host, PC1, is connected to the DMZ server, uh, server 1 on port 80. But we're not taking up a translation slot. So that's nice. Um, we'll just break that quick. And as I said, it's bidirectional. So now if we go to uh, DMZ server one, we can also tell net to the inside host and see, um, like we were saying, it, it's it's net exemption. So the internal uh, IP looks like, still looks like it's internal IP on the DMZ segment. So the DMZ people aren't pointing to a 20, 20, 20 something we netted. It's pointing to the real. If we enter, we should get a connection and we do. Um, if we look in the firewall somewhere here, show xlate. Again, there's no translation slot taken up. Show con. Now we can see that the DMZ host, uh, DMZ server 1, is connected to the inside host PC1 on port 80. So NAT exemption is a good way to uh, um, uh, not NAT your IPs as they go through the firewall. Still be bidirectional, but you don't take up a translation slot in the ASA. And again, you apply that with an access list. Um, and the access list uses... Uh, you put your more secure IP first, your less secure IP second, and the NAT statement goes on the more secure segment. And the ID 0 tells the ASA that we don't want to NAT these IPs. It's exempt from NAT. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment on YouTube. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching.